Okay, so hello everyone, this is Akshay here and let us continue with the uh, next beauty streak and our continuation of our graph playlist. Today's question name is num number of enclaves. It has been asked in company tags is as Google and topics tags we will see later, right? So first we'll read the question, then we'll discuss something and then we'll proceed on with the approach as possible. So we have been given N cross M matrix grid which represents O as a C cell and one as a land cell. Okay. Um, a move consists of walking from one land cell to another adjacent. That is we can consist of a move which we will walk from the cell which has the value as one to its adjacent cell, adjacent set in the four direction, like up, down, left and right. Uh, or walking off the boundary of the grid. Okay, find the number of land cells in grid for which we cannot walk off the boundary of the grid in any number of moves. Total number of LAN cells for which we cannot walk off the boundary. Okay. So that means we need to find a certain island in our given cell. That island should consist of uh, values 1 and which is reachable to each other via allowing in traversing in four directions that is up, right, left and bottom. Right. And it should be bounded with the C cells. Then you need to return the count of the cells which is contributing in that island. Yes, as you can see here. So this is the island. These three ones consist uh, forming an island which is also bounded by the C cells, right? That is no one can jump in and no one can jump out from this island. Let's say like that, right? And you need to con uh, consider the number of cells forming these, this island and you need to return the count, right? Similarly, for the next test case, you can see that this is the number of island consisting of these four ones. Nobody can jump in and nobody can jump out from this island. So we need to consider the uh, uh, con return the number of ones in it, right? So that is four. Now, before solving this question here, we will discuss some things. Because if you have been following my GFG period streak and uh, you were not able to do this question, let's say, then dikkat yaar, right? Because if you strike that we have done the similar question, almost a 90% or let's say 95% similar question we have done in past based on the DFS and BFS and that question name is replace, replace O's with X's, right? We have done in this uh, this question in I guess uh, day 311, so not before from now, let's say from let's just, just two weeks before we have done this question and if you have done this question either by your own or by taking help from my videos, that's okay, right? But since you have done it first time, you, you would have able to at least figured it out that this is something a variation of a question we have done in past. This is the least threshold you should be able to do it, right? So we will discuss some things here. For, for those who were able to figure it out that we have done this question in past, well and good. If you were able to solve it also without taking help, then the best thing, that's the best track you are on, right? right? But for those who have not been able to, let's say, do it. So I'm just saying, I'm giving you some things here. Because, uh, right? question and then when the time comes when the interviewer asks the same question or the variation of it I'm not able to solve it then definitely there is some catch we are doing some mistake right so how we do it here whenever we perform we do some question it's just the first time we are encountering let's say this question right is the first time you have encountered right so what is your responsibility is that after doing this question let's say taking help from another videos or taking help from editorial or anywhere after doing this question you realize okay there are two concepts in all that is dfs and bfs right so you need to understand that concepts dfs and bfs in very detail understand the code uh, memorize it by heart wo code aapko rat chana chahiye kyunki algorithms ke code aapko acche se yaad hone chahiye right actually ho kya raha usme then your second step would be do some questions on it third step would be do some standard variations question on it that is the islands question in the graph finding the components in the graph finding the disconnected com uh, disconnected components or connected components in the disconnected or connected graph right you are done with these three steps now in the next step if some question comes like this number of enclaves come then definitely you will be able to figure it out that we have done this question or at least you'll be said that this is the question that will be done with dfs and bfs right then then you can say to yourself that well done Right? Great. So coming back to the track now. <laughs> so this question is about the number of enclaves. And uh, if you if you have so, if you have, uh, if you have done this question in the past, replace O with XS. So let's just quick a very quick recap because you'll be using the same code which you have written here with just a slight variation, right? What we'll be doing here is so the question says that uh, you need to replace all the O's, right? Which are connected to themselves via four directions, but nobody can reach in 
reach in and nobody can reach out that is here it is surrounded by excess right but as and if that's if, if there is a certain o certain set of o present then you mark it at mark it with x you can clearly see here is there are no certain set of o which is completely bounded by x right you can see there is a island of this this 4o but again it is connected with this o and it is getting connected with x and x right so the above part of this o is not bounded with x so that's why we have returned the as it is the same answer let's discuss the second case you can clearly see this these four o's forming a set and it is completely bounded by the x from all the sides right then these o's are transformed into x as said by the question similarly for these o's so these o's are surrounded by x from left and up but not surrounded by left right and bottom so that is why these remains as it is right so how did we solve this question that we traversed for the corner cells that is the first cell of the first row first column last row and last column we did the dfs right and we made some changes like for this one I traverse for the first row and, and I saw there is a O here, right? So I'll call a DFS function and I will mark all the corresponding O touching to it as let's say some special mark, let's say hyphen here, right? Similarly, I, I did this for all the extremities. So in the first column, there is no O. In the last column, there are two O's, right? So it, both, both of these O's will also be marked with hyphen, right? Now, let's just, just compile the code so after marking this particular set of o with hyphen how the matrix will look like i'll show you while compiling the results yep okay so i have commented this thing so let me just uncomment it okay okay great as you can see all the sets of o hmm. uh, for, for this test case let's say this would be the first column where the o's are present and this would be my uh, last column. So these are these three O's are marked with hyphen. Similarly, when I will calling for let's say this O, then this O and this O is connected. So that is why these three O's are marked with hyphen again, right? So this would be your matrix look like when it would be when you'll be calling all the DFS for all the extreme rows and columns, right? Now, in this matrix, you are traversing again, checking that if there are certain O's present, let's say then definitely then those O's will be a part of a set of O which will be surrounded completely by X because if it would not have been surrounded by completely by X then definitely a DFS would be able to reach that particular and mark that particular O's as hyphen correct if you have not understood it please go back again and repeat and listen to the sentence I said right and you'll be able to get it okay so that's what in the thing we have done after going the DFS, I'm changing changing all the existing O's after going the DFS to X, right? Right, because that was said in the question and then again changing the hyphen to O and that's the answer we got it, right? Similar is the question from here, right? So one thing for you, you need to solve that question first. And before solving this question also, you need to visit my DFS and BFS theory here. Another, any, any place you want to just hold a good grasp of concept on this dfs and bfs maybe you visit dfg site anything right you just be confident in yourself that's it that's the point okay so here what is said is that we need to find the similar set of one which is surrounded by the o's o's here is zero right so again we will do the same thing what we will do is that we will run the dfs so yeah we will start the dfs from the extreme ends so that is from the first row first column the last row and the last column right We'll mark the neighbors as zero and we'll return the count of one in the matrix because uh, this question just wants if you find that island where nobody can reach in and reach out, you just can, uh, you just uh, return the count of that particular one, right? Okay, so let me just show you a very quick dry run. Okay, so let's say for these two cases, what will happen? So we will go for first of let's say the first row, but I cannot see anyone, so I will just skip it. Now I will go for my first column right and i can say there is okay there is one there is one i will visit its neighbor so it is zero it is zero it is out of bound it is zero so definitely i eventually did the bfs but i found nothing i just replaced my this current cell with zero correct now let's go for the last row there is no ones no problem i'll go for the last column there is no one i, I will not call the dfs i will not be bothered of calling the dfs now in the updated matrix, you will run unnested for loop. You will just count the number of ones and you can clearly see there are three ones present and that three is your answer. Correct? Let's just do a DFS for a second now. 
So I went in the first row and I found one here. But I call the DFS in all the four direction. The one is out of bound. The left is zero. Right is out of bound. It is again zero. So what I will do, I will just return for this DFS and I will mark this thing as zero and that's it. Correct. Similarly, for the first column, there is no ones. Now in the last row, I encountered a one, right? So in the up and in the top side, there is zero, right? So no need to go further, right? In the left side, there's also zero, no need to go further. So mark this as first of all zero. Okay, what happened? Yeah. Mark this particular cell as zero and then start traversing in all the four direction. We see top, not possible, left, not possible. I'll go and I'll go down, not possible, out of bound. The only option remaining here is the right one. I will again, since this is one, I will again mark this as zero. I'll traverse in all the four directions. So it is again a zero. It is zero again. I cannot go back because that is already visited, right? I'll go down. And I will say again, it's out of bound, right? So I'll be marking these ones as zeros. Now let us do the DFS for the last column. So I found one here, mark this as zero. Travels in all the four directions. The top is zero, no need to go further. Uh, left is zero, right is zero, down is zero, no need to go further. Just uh, mark this as zero and complete the DFS and that's it. Now in this, in this particular matrix, you have the updated matrix after you have done the DFS for all the first row, last row, first column, last column, right? You will run unnested for loop again. You will just count the number of ones and what you will get four. And that is your answer. That is your answer guys, right? What we will do here is that we will first of all copy paste the same code, right? Because that's what we have done. The first column, last column, la first row and last row, right? So instead of calling the DFS for previous character and new character, we have to replace all the characters with zero. We will start the DFS only for the cell, which is equals to one. So let me just copy paste the same code in the editor and then show to you what the changes we have done. Yep. As we can see, we have called the DFS and this is the updated matrix, the same matrix as we have showed in the dry run. So how the code is written, we have just called a simple DFS function. The input matrix is passed, the X and Y coordinates is passed so that we can traverse in the, in the neighbors. The length of the matrix is passed, right? The length and a breadth or the size of the matrix. First of all, okay, first of all, we need to traverse the uh, in four directions, right? In the four directions, we can clearly uh, say this as, like this, right? Now, now, how is it done here? It is very simple. Uh, so that's how it's done. I have explained it multiple times. Up DFS, BFS, video, dekho, wo question karo, you'll be able to get a very good understanding, right? So if it's X and Y, then definitely if you're going up, then it would be one row up ahead. So the X will be uh, changed to X minus one and we are the same column. So why? So that's how we have changed all the four coordinates and that's what it is passed in the DFS call, right? What are the changes we need to do it before running the DFS? You need to mark that particular column or cell as zero. What would be the base condition that if particular cell is already marked at zero, do you don't need to go further. We saw in the dry run, right? That's what I've written. If it already marked as zero, just return, stop the DFS. We do not need to go further. What are the base conditions? One more, that if it is out of bound, right? We also checked in the dry run that if the pointer was going out of bound, we, we return from that cell, right? Okay. Let's just go back to the main code now. So we have run the DFS for the first column, last column, last row, and the last column. And we are in the DFS only when it is equals to one, correct? And yes, at last we have just uh, used this print statement so, so, that I, so that I can just show you it's the exact matrix that we have done in the dry run. At last we have an asset for loop to just count the number of ones we have in the matrix. And that is it. Let's just now compile and run and we will hit the submit button. Again, if you have done the BFS and DFS, then you are well aware of the time complexity. And if you're not, then let me just give a very quick review that we are visiting each and every cell here. So that's what, and that is why it would be N cross M for the time complexity. Why is space complexity N cross M? Because at max, let's say every cell is marked as one, every cell. So I'll be starting from the first cell and I'll be doing the DFS for each and every cell because every cell is one. I'll be traversing each and every cell. And that is the N cross M calls I'll be having in my recursive stack. That is why space complexity is n cross m. Again, go back and watch my BFS and DFS video. You'll, you'll have a very good understanding. Right. Let's just now hit the submit button. So, okay. Okay, that's, and you can see attempts number one and it's passed with uh, finishing colors, right? So there is one certain optimization that, uh, second optimization is that in the optimization of the code, while we are using two for loops here, we can just do this thing in all uh, one for loop. So let me do that for you and then we can resume.
Yep, so that was the code optimization. Let me hit the submit button. So I'm just, if the row is zero, then definitely I is zero. If the column is first, if the first column, then definitely J is zero. Similarly for the last row, I is equals to N minus one. The last column, J equals to N minus one. That's what I have written. That's what is handling in this statement. If that is the case, then only in the DFS, that's it. Now, if we have done the same thing in the DFS, definitely you can do in the BFS as well. So let's just do that just for a very, um, what to say, good practice of writing a code and that's it. Okay, so that's the BFS code. We have maintained a very standard queue. It's the always a standard template. We have a queue. Then uh, uh, for the we need to add we need to run the DFS for that uh, the first and last and first and last row and columns, right? So that's what we have done. Uh, the same if statement is there. Now we have maintained a queue. And then we have pushed this first the first root child, right? And then we are pulling it out. Then we are calling to its neighbor, storing the indexes. And then we are marking that cell as visited. Now, what are the directions which we can traverse? So I, I said you, right? I have told you, right? This is X comma Y. Then definitely this is minus one comma zero. Then this is zero plus one. So that's what is passed here. See minus one comma zero and then zero and plus one and definitely all the rest of the four coordinates. So these are the four directions in which the neighbor would be present. So that's why using a for loop, we'll be getting a new X and a new Y for our neighbor. Then we'll check if it is out of bound or not. And if it is equals to one or not, it is equals to one, then definitely we need to push it again in the queue. And then again, the traversal will help to mark it again as zero, traverse it to the next neighbor. At last, we'll just return the count and that is it. Let us hit the submit button. We'll see the C process code and then we shall greatly end this video. Great, yeah, great. So that's done. That's go zero method two. Let us switch back to the C process code. So it would be same as we are done in Java and uh, the dry run would be remain same. So this is the BFS code I've commented here. And that's the DFS code, the standard DFS code. Let me just hit the submit button. Do not worry, you will get all the source code in your uh, DSL repository. I'll mention the link in my YouTube description. Right? One last thing I want to say that even though this, for the beginners, it looks like the code is so heavy, how I'll be able to write this recursive function, then again, follow the basics, right? Learn the concepts, learn the concepts, the algorithms and the code regarding it. Do the questions, do questions on it, try some variations and well done. Again, in the future, if it comes similar questions, you'll be able to tackle it. At least you'll be able to tell the interviewer or tell, tell yourself that yes, this question will be solved by DFS and BS, verified by using the topic stacks. And yes, that's great. Okay. Now let us end this video on a very good note and let us meet again in the tomorrow's streak of uh, day 335. Till then, keep learning, keep going. Bye-bye and take care, guys.